my name is Beck, and welcome to a list of my highly anticipated book to TV adaptations. Some of them I've read, some of them I haven't, but I'm excited nonetheless, so let's get into it. The first one that I've got on this list is Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, and this is being produced by Sony Pictures, and I actually haven't read this one, but I know it's like a 15 book fantasy series, and Daniel Green talks about it a lot on his channel, so I need to go and watch his videos on that, because I know that there's a huge fan base for this series, and I only really know little bits about it as well, because I have kind of tried to steer clear of it in case of spoilers. I know this deals with the Chosen One trope, which is one of my favorite tropes in fantasy. So it deals with this guy who has magic and in this world women can use magic but men can but shouldn't because it sends them really insane when they use it. So it's about this character who's the chosen one who has to save the world but is he the chosen one and can he use magic and does he risk using magic or is he just some guy who has magic and if he uses it he'll go insane. So I think it's a little bit about that dichotomy but I'm not too sure about the overarching story and I know it's multiple perspective with a lot of different characters so he's only one character. It sounds super multifaceted and I know there's so much detail in the series so I'm hoping that the TV stays fairly true to the books because I'm really looking forward to getting onto this series and becoming part of the fandom in the future. The next one on this list is The Witcher and I'm really only putting this on my list because I love Henry Cavill and I'm really excited to see him in a fantasy adaptation. This is being adapted for Netflix and it's coming on December 20th I believe. I'm so so hyped up for it after seeing the trailer especially and again I don't know too much about this one either and I've seen a little bit of the gameplay but I haven't read the books and I do want to read the books. I've been advised by Elliot Brooks on her channel, she's a huge Witcher fan, and I've been told that I should start with the collection of short stories called The Last Wish, so I anticipate that will be in a book haul sometime in the near future because I'm really looking forward to reading this series as well as watching the Netflix adaptation obviously. I just know that it follows a Witcher named Geralt and he is part monster, part human, and humans kind of shun him because of his differences, but they also need him, so he's a necessity because he kills the beasts that kill the humans. So I think it's about the fact that humans can be the true monsters even though the creatures look like they're the true monsters. I'm not really sure where I'm going with that, but I like the sound of it and I've liked the gameplay that I've seen. So that is why it's second on my list because it comes out so soon and I'm so excited. The next one that I'm looking forward to might be a surprise because I ended up DNFing the trilogy and it's The Raven's Shadow by Anthony Ryan. So the first book in this series is Blood Song. It's apparently been optioned by BCDF Pictures and it's already got a pilot script. So Anthony Ryan tweeted this recently and I'm really looking forward to how this will appear on screen. The first book follows a character named Valen and his father disowns him and he goes to essentially this school to learn how to become a soldier. Not an assassin but a soldier. And there is magic in this world and it really focused on Valen and Valen's story and that's what I liked about it but the rest of the series split into multiple perspectives and I kind of struggled to get into it unfortunately. But I'm looking forward to seeing it on the screen because the things that I probably struggled with reading the second book won't be a problem seeing it on the screen. So I'm excited to see how this turns out and I know generally that Name of the Wind fans like me will probably like Blood Song because it's a similar kind of premise there is a little bit of magic and there is a school for learning and honing so if you like Name of the Wind you'll probably like Blood Song. The next one is also a book that I've read so it's The Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich and this has been optioned by a production company called Stolen Picture by Simon Pegg and Nick Frost which I'm really pumped about. Because it's been optioned by these two I'm really hoping that the plot of the show has more tension and is a little bit faster than the book was because I loved all of the world building of the book but the thing that fell down for me a little bit was the murder mystery element. I loved all of the magic and the setting and the character but when it came to the tension it fell a little bit flat for me so I gave the book four out of five stars. I still really enjoyed it. It's about this guy who is training to become a detective and he goes to the murder scene because he's on the police force. He goes to a murder scene and he has to help obviously solve the crime and collect evidence and stuff and on the way out of the scene he basically encounters somebody as a witness and takes their statement and has a talk with them and then later on nobody else saw that witness. It turns out it was a ghost so I like that there are gods and ghosts and magic. I like that our main character kind of uncovers this underground section of London where there's magic that exists and he starts to learn magic and it's not a magic that you snap your fingers and you know automatically it's 
a lot of work and takes a lot of honing and focus. So that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about this world. And again, I'm looking forward to seeing all those effects and those characters on screen. I don't know again when this is coming out, I just know that it's been auctioned. The next one is called The Passage by Justin Cronin and I was looking through a few articles for this one and it looks like it was optioned to become a movie but then it was so detailed and it's got a lot of time jumps across decades and stuff that it was hard to translate it so they've changed it into a TV series and I believe this is optioned by Fox. This is on my TBR so I want to read it next year so I haven't delved too much into the plot of it and thankfully those articles didn't spoil me but I know it's a post-apocalyptic book obviously it follows a bunch of different characters and it deals with I thought there were zombies but I've also heard people say that it deals with vampires and then I've also heard people say that it's unspecified so I feel like it's a ghoul vampire zombie mix so basically just really freaking scary and judging by how thick these books are it's going to produce a lot of content and I'm very happy about that it is I think pitched to become a three series tv show so it follows two characters in the first series and then the second series it follows another character and then in the third I guess it follows the events of what's gone on in the first two books. <laughs> the next one I'm super excited about because it is by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff and it's Aurora Rising and this has been optioned by MGM Television and it's going to be distributed internationally so I'm just really proud of the fact that these two local Australian authors have a TV series about one of their sci-fis. It makes me so happy to see a local Aussie author or local Aussie authors rather be successful and I love this book too I have a book talk for it I'll link it in the cards and down below you can go and check it out and have a chat with me this follows a myriad of different characters so about seven but the key character is Tyler and so it opens with him and he's rescuing somebody named Aurora and while he's doing this rescue the rest of his cadets in this academy are taking their test and then after they take their test they get drafted into different teams so Tyler, because he missed out on taking this test because he was saving somebody and doing the right thing, means that he didn't get first choice of his drafting, so he was just stuck with the misfits and the dregs left over. So it's really about these misfits and how they're thrown together and how their dynamic starts to get set up and the fact that Aurora, who Tyler rescued, might be the key to starting a war between species. So it's up to these misfits to basically save the galaxy. And again, I really like this book. I think I gave it like a four stars or a four and a half. It's really worth the read. It's really fun and you can really see the different characters on the page. They don't really blend into one voice. So Amy and Jay have really excelled in distinguishing the, their voices, which I really like about this story. And of course, I couldn't put a list together without including this. So this is the Shadow and Bone and the Six of Crows Netflix series. I haven't actually read the Shadow and Bone series. I've read the first book, but I've read Six of Crows and loved it and I read Crooked Kingdom as well I've read that duology and loved it and I'm so excited to see as I'm sure everyone else is Ben Barnes on the screen as another book character because I loved him as Prince Caspian and I also really liked him in the picture of Dorian Gray. I think the way this is going to work because it's an eight episode Netflix series it's going to be combined because both of Lee Bardugo's books are set in the same world called the Grishaverse so their characters often interweave a little bit so I think it's going to be an amalgamation of both and also aside from Ben Barnes because I know that's why it got so much hype and so much traction when the announcement went out I was looking at all of the rest of the cast and they pretty much match the characters that I was reading the book and picturing in my head like they look the same to me so their casting is absolutely on point and that's why I'm excited to see it come to the screen so I can see the characters that I saw in my head actually talk aloud and come to life. Next up we have A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab and this was optioned by Sony in 2016 so this isn't exactly a new new thing but it's something that I'm excited about regardless and it also has the writer for John Wick which is just the best thing ever. A Darker Shade of Magic is a fantasy, it's an adult fantasy not a YA and it's set across four different Londons so there's red, black, white and grey and Red London is where our main character Kel is from and his magical ability is very rare and it lets him traverse the different worlds. Black London is completely separated because the magic kind of destroyed the people there and it got sealed off and then we've also got White and Grey London where one of our other characters is from. So Lila Bard is a thief and she lives in Grey London where magic doesn't really exist. So the premise is basically that Kel is 
going through the different worlds as a messenger for the king and the prince. And while he's in one of the worlds that isn't Red London, something precious is stolen from him, so he has to get it back. And I don't want to say too much more than that, because that's just the premise that you need to pique your interest. V.E. Schwab also has Vicious optioned by Story Mining and Supply Co. So this is an awesome story as well, and it's kind of like an urban fantasy, I guess. It's about two college students, Victor and Eli, and they've discovered that the rare ability to become extraordinary lies in a particular person and their willpower getting a near-death experience and then coming back to life. So it follows them as they're discovering this for their thesis at uni, and then it follows them also 10 years later, when for some reason they are ultimate enemies and you don't know what's really happened in between and they're trying to hunt each other down. So this is a really kind of cat and mouse story with morally grey characters and X-Men like powers. So it's a brilliant read and I'm so excited again to see it on screen because this is just, it just ticks all my boxes. It's one of the reasons that I picked it up. It's got X-Men powers, it's got open fantasy, it's got morally grey characters. Like what more could you honestly want? And then lastly, I know it's not really a book but I had to include it because it's one of the things that I loved growing up. So Avatar The Last Airbender is being reimagined as a live action Netflix series and they're in partnership with Nickelodeon. I'm so so happy that they're doing it again because let's not speak about the movie because that didn't exist as far as I'm concerned. That cartoon is one of the staples of my childhood and I've rewatched it more times than I can count. It's got some of the best character arcs you can possibly want. If you haven't heard of Avatar, I don't know what rock you're living under, but it's about a boy named Aang and he's in this fantasy world where there are four different nations, so air, water, earth and fire, and the fire nation have gone to war with all of the other nations. So before that happened, he was supposed to be the Avatar, and the Avatar unites all of the elements and they can manipulate all of the elements and he didn't want this responsibility so he ran away and these two characters Sokka and Katara who live in the water nation find him in a block of ice and they rescue him and it turns out that he's been asleep for a hundred years so he's got to basically become the avatar when everyone thought the avatar has disappeared and he's got to stop the fire lord from destroying all of the other nations and restore balance to the world again is one of the cartoons that I again adored as a kid and still adore now at 26 so I'd highly recommend it to anybody of any age group. It starts out fairly young and kiddy and jokey but it gets to a point that's a little bit darker as well and the characters really grow and you grow with them. So again would highly recommend that. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you have any adaptations that I didn't mention that you're excited for. I would love to chat with you but for now I will chat with you in the comments and I will catch you in my next video. Bye!